Are you navigating a life change or perhaps even a crisis? How do we have strategies in order to face those effectively and get through them and flourish? That's the topic that we're going to be addressing today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager, and today I have a special guest and a friend with me on the show. Her name is Dr. Evelyn Taylor. She has 30 years of experience in women's ministry. She's also a theology professor, a Christian speaker that's sought after, and she's an author. She's going to talk a little bit about the new book that has just launched recently. And she's here to talk about those life transitions, which is the focus of her research for this book. Welcome, Dr. Taylor. Evelyn, if I may call you that, since you're my friend, I am so glad to have you on Flourishment today. And I'm so glad to be here today. Evelyn, I want to dive into some of your specific strategies for coping with life changes and crises. Can you start with the first thing that people need to do when they identify that they're in a transition moment in their lives? Yes. The first thing I would say outside of prayer, we know is obvious. The thing that we do is as believers, we go to God in prayer. But then I would say the first thing you, that you want to do is just to acknowledge where you are. And I believe that's so important because we can't get the help that we need if we don't acknowledge that we need help. Acknowledgement has to be the first step to acknowledge where I am. This is where I am. And then once we can identify where we are, then we can see what we need. So I would say acknowledgement would be the first step. And after you acknowledge where you are, you kind of mentioned in the first half of our conversation that the season doesn't define you. You have an identity that carries through. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. And so many times we do plant our identity in temporary seasons. And when we think about life, all seasons are temporary. I know we, we don't like to think about marriage being temporary because it isn't a death to us part, but it is temporary because one partner will most likely depart before the other one. So that too becomes a temporary season. And in those seasons, sometimes we connect who we are so much with what we do or how we show up in that season. And then when the season changes, then we feel like we've lost our identity because we've connected our identity so much with who we were in that season. But when our identity is defined in who we are based on who God created us to be, then that identity moves from season to season with us because we are still the person God created us to be in the new season, even though we may not feel like it. And that's, and I think for me, that was the challenge because so many, our feelings are so, so prevalent and we rely so much upon feeling. And in those moments, I wasn't feeling like I was who I was, who I was called to be. And I had to understand that even though my season had changed, that I was no longer Scott's wife, but I was still the person who God called me to be even before I knew Scott, even before the foundation of the world when God had called me to be Evelyn in the earth and how he would use me and what he would do with me and through me in the earth, those things were still in place. And so I had to come into alignment in my mind with who God said I was and knew that I still could achieve, even though I didn't feel like it in that moment. And then of course, as time went on and I began to see, okay, it may look different in your new season, but you still are able and will accomplish what God placed you in the earth to do, but it may look different, but the end goal will be the same. And that is to fulfill the plan of God for your life. Identity is so key when we're facing changes, whether they're crises or good changes. And we do get those mixed up in our relationships and in our occupations or volunteer roles. Can you dive in specifically to some of the challenges with losing a job or a volunteer opportunity? Yes. And it's the same thing as you mentioned, losing a job. 
if you are in a position with a company, maybe you've been with that company for a lot of years and you hold a high position in that company and then the company folds, then who are you? Who am I in this new season? But we have to remember that I am still who I am. That was a position for that moment or for that season. And that season has passed, but that does not change who I am. And I keep saying this because I think it's true that sometimes when we lock in and don't want to change, then we miss out on opportunities that could even be greater than the opportunities that we had before because we are so locked into that opportunity. Maybe God has a a better job for you. Maybe he wants you to start your own company, your own business, and not work for someone else. And the opportunities are there for you to do other things, but we just have to be willing to look beyond where we were and look to what might be in our future. But it's still scary to it's face scary. a big change like that. Is, so what do we stepping, do to get past the being scared? Well, it's scary because you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. And, you know, we like to be comfort, comfort, comfortable. <laughs> no one likes to be challenged. We like to be comfortable. We like to, well, let me just say, I like to know what tomorrow is going to hold for me. And that's not always the case. Life, life is not like that. And so I just say, be be courageous, take courage, take that leap of faith. I have to, let me tell you something, Tina, really quick. What happened to me uh, over 30 years ago before I was married? I said yes to a marriage proposal from my husband on, over the phone. We had never seen each other in person. And I said yes to the marriage proposal. Now, I'm I'm normally a very organized person who likes to know what's coming next. That's just my personality. But I took that leap of faith, right? I took that leap of faith. And that led me to a 27-year marriage and two wonderful children, where if I had not taken that leap of faith, had not moved outside of my comfort zone, who knows? So sometimes it pays just to move, be willing to move. And even though you may be scared, afraid, do it anyway. Do it afraid because you just don't know what God has for you in the future. And if you believe that that is the plan of God for your life and the direction that he's leading you and doors are closed on every other front, then walk through the door that's open and just trust God that he knows what he's doing and that great things await you. It takes great intentionality in order to choose faith by our thoughts and what we speak and what we declare instead of our feelings, doesn't it? It does. It really does. And that is where that that's what faith is. It's trusting and believing and, and giving credence to the truth of God's word, even though we may not see it or know what the end is, but we believe that God is who he say, who he says he is. And that's what faith is believing without seeing. And, and take an action. I heard, uh, I think it was Dr. Tony Evans who said, uh, faith is acting like you believe what God said is true. What if you're acting like you believe and you're walking out trying to have courage, but you're still a little scared? Pray, ask God to help you and keep moving forward. And then ask, ask people who you know, people who, who are strong in their faith, people who you believe who you believe in and you've seen them walk that road before you and they seem to seem to be able to navigate it well, ask them for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. We all need help in our lives. And, and I believe that there are people who have been strategically placed to help us. And we just have to ask and open our eyes and see and be willing to receive the help that they offer. Those are some good strategies so far. What are some more things that you want to make sure that people know about when they're facing a change in life? Well, the other thing I would say that in addition to acknowledging and embracing and asking for support, I would say also be kind to yourself when you're in a difficult season. Be gentle with yourself. Treat treat yourself like you would treat a friend who might be in that situation. And sometimes we we are very hard on ourselves. But I always like to ask 
myself the question, if I had a good friend or one of my children was experiencing a challenge in life, what would I say to them? I wouldn't say to them, oh, you should do better. Get over it. You're, you're a wimp. I would be get t- kind to them. I would be gentle with them. I would be encouraging with them. I would be show compassion to them. So show that same compassion to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Recognize that you're in a hard season. There may be some fear that comes along with that. There may be some some challenges that comes along with that. Take the time that you need. You know, make sure you eat healthy, exercise, get good rest. Grief, especially, is it's almost like a job. It takes a lot of energy. So get good rest and take care of yourself and eat healthy and do some things that bring you joy. Do some things that you enjoy doing. Do some things that that bring life to you in that season because it does take a lot of energy to navigate it and you want to be strong and ready for the journey. And in order to be strong and ready, you need to have some extra joy So something that makes you happy, listen to music that you love, watch a funny movie so you can laugh some, but just take the time to be gentle with yourself and don't be too hard on yourself with expectations, but be kind and compassionate. Evelyn, are there any final tips that you as a professor, as an author, as an expert want to make sure that those who are struggling with a transition, a season that they're facing that's new and hard and scary, what would you like to leave with them today to make sure they know how to get through this? I would say, always remember that you're never alone. God is with you. He's always with you. He loves you. He wants the best for you. But he has also placed people in your life who are willing to come along beside to help you and to encourage you. You're not alone. Remember that you're not alone and you can do it. That's wonderful. And Dr. Taylor, I know that you've got a wealth of information in your new book, In and Out of Season. Can you talk about what people can expect to receive when they get their copy? Yes. When, when I wrote that book, one of the things or several things I wanted the readers to be able to walk away with, one is I wanted them to be encouraged to know that they are not the only ones who have ha- been in difficult seasons and their people will have been before them. People have come before them who were in difficult seasons and were able to navigate it. And people will come after them who will be in difficult seasons And it will be up to us or those of us who have been in that place to help those newcomers. So I want people to be encouraged by reading the book. Uh, And I want them to be inspired to help other people. And the third thing is I want them to be comforted to know that they're not alone because it can be a lonely place sometimes. And you feel like you're the only one who may have faced that challenge or maybe in that moment you're feeling all alone but I wanted them to know that they're not alone. And I share openly, I I lay my heart out in this book to share with the readers just some of my personal experiences that I've had, hoping to encourage them and to inspire them. And I do believe that those who read the book, they will be encouraged by it. And I believe that they also will be challenged by it and they will be inspired by it to reach out to help someone else. How can those who connected with us today for this interview get a copy of that book and stay connected with you? The book is available on Amazon and other other online bookstores, and you can ask for it in your local bookstore as well. It is available to be purchased if you don't find it on the shelf. The bookstore only can get it for you. I can be reached on my website, evelynjtaylor.org, on Instagram. Evelyn J. Taylor, X at Evelyn J. Taylor, and on Facebook, Dr. Evelyn Johnson Taylor. I hope that all of you who have joined us for this broadcast today feel equipped 
inspired and encouraged. If you are facing a challenging season, a crisis or a change. And of course, I also hope that you will come back for the next episode of Flourishment.